Hi, I'm Cindy and welcome to the five keys to unlocking the secrets of novel writing. This is our first key, story arc. Now, what is a story arc? You know what, what an arc is. It's, it's kind of a bridge, a beginning, a high point in the middle, and something that comes to an end. And that's what this is. It's your story's narrative arc, or sometimes it's called a dramatic arc. It is the path or journey of your story. It's the way that your scenes and your chapters unfold with certain events happening at certain times. And there are parts to a story arc that will help you kind of organize your writing or just give where the emotional lifts of your story should occur. It's called exposition, which is very different from the fifth key. And we'll get to that in later episodes. So it's exposition, rising action, the climax, falling action, and then the resolution, or sometimes it's called a denouement. It's that cutesy little bit at the end. So let's talk a little bit about story arc exposition. This is the reader's introduction to the story. It is your opening scenes. We will see your character in his everyday life, and we'll get into more of that because a lot of this is very similar to our second key, character arc. But it's getting the reader into the story, into the rhythms of the story. Uh, we get introduced into who the main characters are, the setting, the location maybe perhaps when, if it's taking place in a certain time period. And it also just kind of gives you those, those themes. It's the setup. We might even get a sense of what the story tension is going to be. Um, this is a great uh, uh, example. We've all heard of this. It was a dark and stormy night. It, it, it's terrible. It's a terrible trope, but it actually does tell you a little something. What does it tell you? It tells you it was nighttime. It was because it was dark and, and it was stormy. You could have a bright night if perhaps if the moon was lit. And so that would give a certain sense of setting. But so it actually tells you a tiny little bit of what your story is, is what's happening in your story, where it's going. Now, I've chosen uh, an excerpt here from my own book, Trine Rising. It's the first novel in my Kindera saga. And this is quite literally the first page. And I'm not going to read all of it to you, but you've seen, I've, I've highlighted a few things. I talk about this small boy, his name is Taddy, and he and my main character, Marana, are, are magic users. Um, and you can see where I've talked about his breath turned into little puffs of steam in the chill air. So, you know, it's cold. So that gives you some sense of the atmosphere. Um, you see Marana doing a little bit of, a little bit of magic where she illuminates some, some lamps. And, um, so you, again, you know, it's probably nighttime because we're talking about shadows and it also lets you know she's a magic user. Um, there's another uh, sentence towards the end. I talk about despite the wet snow falling outside, the bodies and the breath of horses made the stable comfortable. So now you know it's, it's winter time or, or it's cold, so it's snowing. So in story arc exposition, we learn the names of the character and supporting character. We know where they're located. They're in a massive stable. We know the time of day, it's evening. We know the weather, it's cold, snow, wet snow is falling. We also learn even a little bit more. We learn that Marana herself, based on some dialogue I didn't read out to you, but you can read the passage if you want. We learn that Marana herself is a student. She references her mother, so we know her mother is a person of importance. And we also see, and this is very important for any story, I happen to write fantasy, you know, epic fantasy, but it doesn't matter what you're writing. You could be writing a crime novel taking place in present day Manhattan. Um, so we get to see Marana in her normal everyday life. And I even allude to some story tensions. There's a couple of sentences. We also learn all of this information 
in just the first three pages of the first chapter of Trine Rising. So that gives you some sense of how I am introducing to you this, this mammoth, it's epic for a reason, this, this brand new world, uh, this new fantasy world that you likely have never visited. And so it, um, really begins to set up the story. That's what exposition is, is the setup. Story arc exposition, I should point out, is the setup. Um, important point, and when we talk more about other kinds of exposition, you don't want to force feed the reader. You don't want to do info dumps or brain dumps where you just go on and on and on and on and on with explaining all this extraneous data and information and scene setup. Do just, just the tiniest teaspoon that you can give your readers so they can get through the scene and not be lost. That's all you want to do. There are other ways, and we'll talk about that. There are other ways and places to give more and more complex exposition for the story. So let's move on to our second part of story arc, the rising action. It sounds fairly self-explanatory, um, but there's a couple of key elements in this particular part of the story arc. There is the inciting incident, and the call to action. You might have heard this. You've probably often heard of a CTA as far as uh, when you do your social media posts. It's, you know, post now or, or uh, follow me or something like that. That's a call to action. The inciting incident is the event that triggers the story for real. A lot of this has been introductory information, getting, you know, setting everything up, getting the character set up, getting the scene, the, the uh, location set up, the environment. Um, same thing, call to action. Sometimes it feels very similar to inciting incident and, and the differences could be subtle, but it is, again, the inciting incident is really bringing the crux of the story to a larger stage. And the call to action is the event that propels the main character out of their everyday circumstances. Sometimes the call to action can actually be more associated with the character arc. And that's our second key. And we will get to that in a little while. This is when, like I said, the readers are beginning to see what the story is really about. For instance, and I do a lot of references to Star Wars because it's my all-time favorite, the original one. So perhaps the inciting incident here is uh, when Darth Vader captures the princess and he begins to interrogate her about uh, the Death Star plans. So now we know this is a world at war and what's really going on, those Death Star plans that everybody's looking for. Uh, another uh, story that I love to use examples of because Charles Dickens displays it oh so well is from A Christmas Carol. And it's it isn't until he has the first ghost, the ghost of Christmas past that takes him back to his unhappy childhood and, you know, how he kind of turned a blind eye to his former fiance. And it shows he begins to break a little bit. When we see him reference, and if you've read the story as opposed to some of the um, movie adaptations, he's seeing his schoolyard and some of his friends, and he makes note that he's wiping away a tear. So a little bit of his heart is beginning to crack there. But So we're beginning to spin out the tension of the story. So it's rising action or rising tension. The next portion of the story arc is the climax. And this is very important to learn because many people, and myself included until I, like I said, studied writing for, for 20 odd years, climax isn't that necessarily that big comeuppance at the end of the story. It usually happens more towards the middle. So it is the scene of the highest tension in the story. Um, it's where storylines and all the characters, especially if you've had other forks of the story, everything is starting to come back together. 
and the main character makes his or her do or die situation. I'm, you know, laying it all on the line and I've got, I'm going to go do this thing or heck be damned, you know? And it's important, this is not the story's end. So if you take nothing away from this first section, this first key of the story arc, the climax is not the end of the story. Again, we're going to use an example from Star Wars. As the rebels are fighting for their lives, Luke decides to embrace the Force, and his, which is his do-or-die decision, and uses it to destroy the Death Star, acts on his decision. I sometimes even wonder if the climax for Luke is actually when he and the princess and Han have just made their escape and those TIE fighters come out and um, try to shoot down the ship, which is problematic for many reasons because if Darth Vader wanted to track the Millennium Falcon to find out where the uh, rebel forces were hiding, why did he want to destroy the ship? But anyway, <laughs> that's another video for another day. But if you think about it, that's where Luke stops being quite so passive and takes his seat at the quad guns and actively begins to work on uh, striking out against the, the Empire and trying to save the uh, ship and trying to, um, you know, help the rebels. And even though it's not expressly stated, that's probably where he gets the idea, I'm going to join the rebels, more so than that scene that we have between Luke all suited up for his X-Wing and talking to Han. So I've often wondered if the climax technically isn't there where we have that ferocious but brief battle with the TIE fighters and Luke actively takes part. It would have been better had Luke not, if, if Han had said, come on, buddy, we're not out of this yet. It would have been better if he said something like that or like, Han, show me where your quad guns are. We got to take these guys down. That would have been even stronger. But I often wonder if this is the technical climax as opposed to the big, uh, uh, you know, uh, TIE fighter, you know, Darth Vader's TIE fighter chasing Luke scene. But you get the sense that both are, are very high tension stories, do or die stakes. Our next bit is called falling action. This is when the tension, the extreme tension finally breaks because of the main character's decision and the loose ends are beginning to be tied up. It sounds a lot like the denouement, but it's not quite. For example, in, in Star Wars, let, let's go ahead and for all intents and purposes, um, uh, 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 say that the climax was when Luke destroys the Death Star. The falling action, and it's brief, we don't have to have, you know, hours and hours of falling action, is when Han Solo congratulates Luke, that was one shot in a million, and uh, Luke hears the disembodied voice of Ben Kenobi in his ear saying, the force will be with you always. So we have this <sighs> huge breath sigh of relief. So the falling action is the sigh of relief, if you will, after the more climactic scene. The last part of our story arc is the resolution or the denouement. A lot of times people mix up the resolution with the climax because you're thinking, oh, wow, it's, you know, the climax is resolving the, the story tension because it's the do or die uh, situation, the do or die decision. But, but it's not. I think we're, most of us writers are perhaps more familiar with the term denouement. It's the fun thing at the end. It's a lot of times some, some humor. Um, it is, uh, uh, um, it's beginning to show us a new normal of what the hero or our main characters have learned after having gone through their experience. And it brings everything hopefully to a satisfying close. So in Star Wars, uh, again, it is the, the medal ceremony where, where Han and Luke and Chewbacca receive their medals and all the uh, other soldiers, you know, snap to attention and salute their newfound compatriots. 
And that just brings everything to a nice close. The hero has saved the day. The princess has been rescued. And we get a sense that, wow, we now have a new hero who's going to make everything all right. So let's just recap what our story arc is. Again, there's five pieces to it. There's exposition, which in this case, we mean setting the stage for the story and seeing our character in their everyday life before everything changes. There's rising action, which is the next bit where we begin to see the true story unfold and we get to see what the story is all about and the tension and maybe even some of the stakes. There's the climax, which is the penultimate part. It is the peak or the highest part of the arc where the tension is highest. Everything's been building up to this point. And it's where the character makes this his do or die decision. There was the falling action, which is the catching your breath moment after the climax. And then there is the denouement, where everything comes to a happily ever after, hopefully, or some sort of satisfying ending. And we get to see a bit of a new normal and a new order is established based on the actions of our main character. So I hope that explains a little bit of what a story arc is and the various components and why it's so important that if you can really work through these points and place them in the proper order, your story will be so much stronger. All right? Hey, stay tuned for our next chapter, our next key, Character Arc. Thank you.